Awesome. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this episode of NSFW. I assume uh, we'll play some kind of outro music, and we'll see you guys later. Diana Bye. Fire. Love you guys. Hi, chat room. Bye. 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 Thank you, Richard. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, D. Snyder. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Holy cow, man. Uh, I was Dude, such I a... this year. That's going to be awesome. I, well, I, mm, yeah, I don't know. You have a number of wild cards. Well, I mean, mm, everything this is looked... the first yeah. year, and this doesn't mean anything, but this is the first year that I got done with the draft, look at what I got, and go, I like all of those. I, mean, I think I, all of those will be worth every, it. Winning because I don't know what is going to actually make money this year. Yeah, I'm it actually going to be a really close year. Like, it may be one of those where we're neck and neck, where Brian is in the lead for a month and then it gets left behind when Grown Ups comes around. And then it's <laughs> us competing and Brian competing for last place. Wait, so here's the question, right? We uh, Like, the World's End, the, Grown Ups 2 and the World's End are the, like, first of all, Oblivion's going to do, say, 140. Um, mm -hmm. Iron Man 3 will do 300, maybe 340. So that guy has, in general, the winner tends to get about a billion dollars right so it's like that puts me between we'll say 450 to 600 million despicable me too looking at 100 to 160 million or whatever that gets me up to like 700 thousand ish it actually might million make more than the last one not only because of a sequel bump but also because i think 3d wasn't the same uh you, you're gonna get a 3d kick for so, so me too. yes i overpaid for grown-ups too but if 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 Grown Ups Two does sixty million dollars, I'm pretty screwed. But that would be less than half than what the first one did. Uh, you but notice if, if, Sarah has seven movies. Yeah, the rest of us have five. But, She's got a lot of garbage, though. Yeah, and now you, Justin, you only have four. I do have four, but I mean, I got two of the two of the thoroughbreds. She way overpaid for the internship, and she way overpaid for now. You see, doesn't me. matter what you paid though. She's got seven movies, and if they all do sufficiently, that's two extra, you know, fifty, okay. eighty to million dollars. I'll be impressed if both. Now, I'm not going to stake bet, but I'll be surprised if now you see me and the internship together do more than a hundred million. Yeah, you may be right about that. But you know what? Crazy. This is exactly the same thing we said two years ago, and I was like, Bridesmaids is going to do 50. It don't, you know, I've seen it. It's not, <laughs> not going to do anything more than that. And, like, that exploded in every single one of them. Oh, but man, I know. Because I was nodding along with, I was like, no, Cargill, man, he knows what he's talking about. Listen to that guy. It's, yeah. I'll no. tell you what, though, uh, Tom, if I had to trade mine for, for somebody else's, I would go with yours. Because, yeah. Do me a favor. You have five if, if you wanna, strong ones. Uh, Melissa McCarthy's uh, box office totals are rotund. She people love seeing Melissa McCarthy, like that Identity Thief movie, which was by any measure apparently crap, like made a hundred fifty yeah. million dollars. No, Tell well, and, tell and, I completely spaced on what that movie was when everyone was bidding, so I didn't bid on it. And then the minute when it was it was mentioned after she won it, that it was a Paul Feig movie. I'm like, oh wait, I've seen this. This thing is no, this is going to be huge. It's I'll a, be it's Sandra Bullock. She, Sandra I'll Bullock's be, good for you know a nice base base of money right there. I'll be surprised if Tom doesn't take it. I think Tom wins this whole thing. I think he has the best selection of movies. He's going to kill us. Well. That's always – well, okay, now, you know, what, here's the only reason I would disagree. No, no, I'm not as a downer, but I just think his movies are just – that's five really strong, hard movies. Like, I don't – those are going to be hard to compete it's with. It's going to be the biggest grocer of the year, though. No, it will not. It will make – it'll make $250 million, maybe $270. Uh, Let's say it even does better than that. I don't have a good enough backup. Like, you know, this uh, – Star Trek is basically my um, – Yeah, it's my, it's my Hunger Games. I wanted, but I was not going to go as high as that went for painting games. Yeah. But okay, well, so here's the good news: uh, is that like every time we all just bid on what we think it will be, and the winner tends to be those wild cards. There's something in the last half that we all undervalued that's going to blow up, and it won't be one the one that we predicted is. It'll be we'll be wrong about it. It'll be like it's it's why I went out all out for uh, three hundred. Because it's like, you know, I got 300 for 12. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, 300 smells a lot like Conan to me. Yeah, yeah, but it could. But the point is still there. Like, it could just suddenly, like, it could be amazing. We might not have any idea. And it becomes like a, a cult hit because people are tired of sci-fi at that point, And they want a little fantasy and a comic book. And everybody loved 300. And it's like, ah, sure, I'm going to see that. I mean, weird stuff happens like that. I think Elysium could go that way. I it it could also just kind of 
coast and not do anything, but it could also become the next inception. I mean, it, it's just hard to say. Here, I'll, I can actually move your screen down, Cargill, and I think I can make it, <laughs> I think I can make it smaller, too. You know, you know it's going to become the next uh, inception. What hello, is, uh, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> That uh, that Christopher Nolan produced Man of Steel movie. Boy, does that look good! Oh my gosh, it could be. It could be. I don't know. You don't think? I, I, that that I don't more... think it becomes the next Inception. Uh, 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 Everyone <laughs> expects it to make a ton of money. <laughs> Nope. Yeah. Well, that's because they, they never. They, everyone expected the first, you know, the 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 last Superman movie to make a ton of money, and it didn't. And it had yeah. nothing to do with the quality. It was the fact that there's only a certain target audience for the Superman character. Oh, it wasn't oh, yeah. very it good either. Battleship. Though. Real quick, uh, Ali, do you want to hang around for all this nonsense talk, or do, are you you got to head out? No, I mean it's not bad. I don't mind hanging out. I'm glad that I didn't have to do any bidding because, like, I'm so not lost. How long? How many years have you guys been doing this? This is our fourth year, fourth right? Year. Yeah, you guys are pros. I don't even watch movies. Like, I turn them on and listen, but <laughs> usually do something else. And, and the weirdest part is it's, it's not just, uh, it's, it says, says the film writer slash movie critic. Uh, this is, uh, uh, the weird thing is, is it's not even about what you like personally. It's about what you think will do well. And that, that's my favorite part about this whole game is it forces you to root for movies that you think are abject trash, but you hope make a mint. Uh, yes, but yeah, that but you was called my strategy last like, time. You know what other movies in the past have done. Uh, I'll tell you what. I I got no idea this year. I had, I had no idea going in. I'm happy with the movies that I got, and I still have no idea. Chat Realm is going to be I, – I, if you want to take first place in Chat Realm for exactly one day – Put put my picks on there, and then you'll be in first because the winners of Chat Realm is all going to be those 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 bargains at the end. Here's the problem about uh, the World's End is I don't even know if it's going to be in wide release by the time that uh, we're done counting. <sighs> what? No, you you get four weeks after the movie starts. I mean, it depends, but I mean, like, so you have one week that's like New York and L.A., and then like another week there it's like the secondary. Cities. Yeah, but your first two weeks, I mean, you get what what fifty eighty percent of your cash the first weekend. Is that right? Uh, remember you know, Lincoln. Like remember that. how Lincoln treated you. Well, that's but, a good point. Lincoln was weird. Something something tells me World's End ain't going to be. What's this be, year's? I'm not saying it's going to do as well, but it's the same. It could be the same release pattern. Remember, you started didn't start making your money on Lincoln until several months later. Yeah, that's the well, again. Leagues. What what is this year's? Uh, do we have a GI Joe this year that'll fall out and we'll all be surprised it got delayed a year or something like that? I hope so, and then maybe, oh, maybe get a substitution. Maybe it'll be, no. I don't was know. that was what was the movie that you had that got yanked that we ended up having to give you prom instead? Oh. Well, the oh. same thing happened with Ted, though. I mean, you swapped Ted out for. No, that was last year, but no, I think I think I actually bid on prom. Uh, no, no, because I remember. No, you got prom because that's no, you why got you got prom. I remember that too. It's when you started the prom, we'll take testing. prom, and we're like, really? And you're like, yeah, I think it'll do well. Yeah, how did that turn out? That was not. Yeah, such GI a good Joe idea. left, and you got Ted, which yeah. I did because I won without that. That's so. That's that's mm -hmm. not sure why that was relevant. And to by the, the way, and by the way, <laughs> did you look at what uh, GI Joe did in the box office? I could have had GI Joe instead of Ted. I would have done. I would have won by more. Again, not not sure what any of this has to do with the discussion. That's, I'm just saying. That's raining. Justin, champion. you won. Okay, you won. Yeah. Raining. <laughs> who, who got the one, Who ended up with that White House movie? Hold on. Who was that? That was mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's underrated. The only downside of that one, though, is that are people going to be uh, that because that Olympus thing's doing all right. Are people going to be sick of White House under siege movies by the time that hits? Wait. I don't think many people saw the first one. Yeah, mm. it did, well, it did okay, but not summer well. No, no that's a good point. Everybody was joking that this was the goopy version before the real version comes out in the summer. Remember mm. the sun well, although. <laughs> Morgan Freeman were to run against Jamie Foxx for president, who do you think would win? Something oh, only Tom and I would get. Right? No, the real question is if Morgan Freeman ran against um, uh, uh, now I'm blaying out his name, Darth Vader. Uh, oh, James, James Earl Jones. Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. Yeah. Who, would win, who would win that election? Or because it's the Roland Emmerich movie, Bill Pullman. Jamie Foxx, <laughs> Bill Pullman. I'll tell you what, you, you know, there's a weird part like... Uh, Again, I'm pretty sure I'm screwed, but I'm really going to enjoy uh, owning the a movie that I'm most excited for for the entire summer and a movie that has the potential to maybe be the biggest moneymaker of the whole summer. Like, I'm pretty excited about that. 
I mean, I, I was might... instructed to get Star Trek into darkness by my wife because she wanted to cheer for me. <laughs> oh, tell her I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I should have told you that. <laughs> I love Eileen. I don't want to. I'm not. I, you know, I don't want to steal people's movies. I still. I mean, I, the problem with the with Star Trek is excited as I am about Star Trek, and as much as I think it's going to make a crap ton of money, it's going to make nerd money. It's not the same as general public money. And I'm I don't know. worry about that. General public really it's, likes this franchise. This has got big, big jump written all well, over. Especially, it. I th think about the Star Wars bump. If nothing else, you know, it's like, well, of course. I mean, that's the same. That's crowd. a nerd bump, yeah, though, right? I mean, no, it, the real people bump is people love that first movie. It has a, a great word of mouth. People have watched it a million times on Netflix and Redbox and all that stuff like that. Uh, it's an extremely rewatchable movie. There's just a lot of people who have seen it that want to see these characters in another adventure. Oh, man. Did is... you guys watch these movies all? Are you going to see all of them? No way. We're just, but we are going to wake up every morning and go to Box Office Mojo and see what they make. Well, I live, like, track I live like a stuff. mile from, a, uh, from an Alamo draft house, so me and my wife are just going to walk down and see these in the afternoon. So. Oh, I'm definitely going to be creepily there during the 10 a.m. Saturday showing of Epic. It's just gonna be uh, Paul. And me. Paul, the book guy, is saying Avengers 1.5 billion. You gotta remember, we're domestic only. It's got to be U.S. Right. Uh, I, three. If I'm lucky, we'll break like 350, which is about what uh, that's what, about what the Dark Knight did, right? Well, the thing yeah. is, that all the, both of the previous Iron Man movies made 300. The real question is, is Avenger going to bring in Avengers going to bring in anyone extra to uh, to that? And it might, but at most, I'm thinking at most 100 million. Wait, for Iron Man 3? Yeah. Total? So, so an, no, an no, no, 400 million. Oh, an extra, yes, yes, yes. I, th I think, I, but that's what I'm hoping, is I think Iron Man, like, Iron Man 2 was like a $250 million movie, and I think we'll get maybe a $100 million bump from the Avengers. Because it's the same Avengers 2. At the same time, it's a Shane Black movie, and it, very, it looks very badass. It looks dark as hell. It could be that surprise movie that comes out and, and fully Christopher Nolan's and just takes the series to another level and then makes just an asinine amount of money. I don't know. Um, yeah. That could so happen. I see that. But then again, I see literally there's like half the movies when I looked at the draft that could make yeah. gigantic money. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's all a big gamble, which is what makes this fun. And, and, you know, the thing, I, I'm looking at my list and I'm like, you know, even if I lose this summer, I'm going to lose proud. It's not going to be like last time where I come on again and you guys are like, ah, Green Lantern, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know? And then, Allie, to answer your question, I'll see Pain and Gain, Star Trek Into Darkness, Lone Ranger, and maybe Red 2. So this is maybe the first time I'll probably see every one of those movies that's on my list. There's no junkers for me on this one. See them or just happen that way. Yeah, it's hard well, not, I, it's hard to divorce yeah. yourself from how you feel about it. I do. It is. It's the hardest thing. That's why I suck at this thing that we do. I'm terrible at this for that reason. It does well now. So, yeah. I'm just I'm lousy at at pulling myself away from the stuff I geek out about and trying to you know just think about the money. It's really hard for me to do. Now here's here's the only thing about pain and gain. Has anybody read the articles on which they are based? No. Uh, yeah, because it's a true story, right? Yeah, it's a true story. Worth reading. There are Miami New Times articles. Uh, but there's a darker side to this story than the trailers let on. Like, these, the characters that we are laughing at in Mark Wahlberg and The Rock and the other guy, uh, they are not good people. Like, this is a very, very, very black comedy unless they very much... Uh, de like you know, detour away from the story, uh, the true story, which uh, they don't seem to be, since they keep uh, you know crediting the original stuff and and making a big deal about it in the press. What I've seen of this movie is really dark. Pain and Gain was on my list of things that I wanted to get. It just got bit up too high, and I think it was overbid. Uh, but that was that was on my short list of of things that I wanted because I didn't think any I thought everyone else would be like Michael Bay. Screw it, I'm not going for Bay. Me too. But yeah, uh, but this is where this is where Bay is strong. It's Bad Boys Bay. It's it's the Rock Bay. It isn't Transformers Bay. And where where Bay shines is when he's doing this weird buddy cop buddy criminal thing, and that's where I'm kind of banking it. This, but but all weird. this talk of darker you know story parts is kind of weird for me. But I remember you guys were like, really? You're bidding high on Transformers? And I was like, well, yeah. And I was right. It was the one thing that it made money for me that year. But so, uh, a, lot, a, lot's, yeah. a lot's changed. That's the one thing about this league is that like, yeah. 
it, back in back in the first year, everyone's like, I want the movies I like. And now everyone's just cold and calculated and like, you know, yeah, Mo, Michael Bay, good return. So uh, one thing we haven't talked about is like uh, for as much as we do our best to figure out what movies are worth and what the good value is, like really – for us, it's a little bit different from Chat Realm because they get to actually coldly evaluate what the best bargains are. But being in the heat of the moment, like we only have an hour to figure out, you know, this stuff and it's all <laughs> happening live. And the strategy, like that moment when when Cargill and I played chicken and I lost, like that was huge. That was a major, because my plan was like, I had no money. I just had that $6 and I'm and lucky. You, you do know that that's exactly why I did that. Oh, that sure. I and I thought, well, you and I were playing the same game against each other, but you bluffed me and I bluffed you, only you, you won the bluff. <laughs> yeah, that's how I ended up with After Earth too. <laughs> that is also how that happened, yes. Yeah. Wait, yo, wait. I, and 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 I want to I want a couple rounds of that sort of thing myself. But that one I was like thirty three. <laughs> I was like, oh crap! I'm this, dangling out here over the edge. And this this year is different too because number one, we had one more movie. Not that that made a huge difference, but having one more movie knew that you needed to make your money last longer. But second of all, like so many unknown, you know, could be hits. It's like um, with that much variability. Uh, usually by the end, you got all these. Uh, these movies that everyone knows isn't going to make any money, so you drop you know two three bucks. I got one movie for one dollar that one time. Yeah, right. but uh, this time there really wasn't that. We you couldn't look at anything in the last two months or last month and know for a fact it was just going to be a total turd and and throw nothing at it. Well, and also this is yeah. the first time that we've ever had big tentpole movies go for under fifty in the last two years. Normally the big ones like the Batman's and the Avengers and stuff like that uh, went for over fifty, and this time you know. That's why I well, went for Superman. Well, there were a lot of uh, there were. You, you keep in mind though that those two films that you mentioned were films that were guaranteed to be like you know nearly you know six hundred million dollar movies. Like that was something that was so you knew it was going to be huge like that. But in previous years, you know when people bid fifty for a movie, I, I remember um, everybody going nuts over Sarah. You know, getting uh, Harry Potter for. Yeah for a big amount and it's like really she got it for under 50 it's like well yeah, yeah she won exactly how much money that movie's gonna make and it's the other movies that need that that she needs to to make her but uh, her budget off of and there there is no super tent pole this summer it's just no. a bunch of big tent poles yeah uh, so it's, it's it's very likely that any of these oddball films we have does huge like i think that this is the end could do it could be the hangover of the summer. I, agree. I think it could do two twenty two fifty uh, because it's that movie that has such a big cast and just looks so absurd and is over the top and brings in everybody. But I could also tank and I could get eighty out of it, and we we just don't know. I mean it, that that seems like it has a a three amigos kind of vibe to it, like you know that it has like like a three amigos kind of meets the hangover sort of thing, uh, which. I mean, it should be big. Let me ask this, Ali. Uh, if there's one movie, you can pick one movie that will make the most money uh, on our slate of films, which is the movie that you think will make the most? I have zero clue about this, seriously. Even following what you guys were going on, I, I could not tell you. Okay, let's, let's, say, let's say you, uh, all of us have money to spend. Actually, whatever. No, no, that, get, no, 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 no. This is, this is the point. Because you are the film goer who will, by the way, decide the draft. We're all people who pay right. attention to this stuff. You are just somebody who looks at things. On She's the also somebody who has a giant Sully and Mike in her living room. So there's that going too. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. You guys have this knowledge of like what they're pulling, which is not the average knowledge of your average person. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to see a movie that I want to see. And you guys are, you know, it's something different that you guys understand about this. Hey, can I tell you honestly, Allie, that you surpassed our greatest hopes and visions for, oh, for your bumpers? <laughs> That was amazing. It was, that was, it was the best draft we've ever had. Yes. Oh, the, certainly the most entertaining. Sweet. Yeah. No, it was awesome. Thank you for pulling me in last minute. I'm I thrilled. can't. Uh, people are asking why your video is not on, and it's because I can't. Uh, I can't switch anything. See the little encoding thing over there? It says encoding in that corner. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, as long as that's doing something, I can't do something. Uh, Excuses. I will Man. second, third, fourth, and fifth what Brian just said. Uh, instead of Brian getting yelled at by all of us to shut up and uh, quit trying to affect the draft. We got freaking entertaining, funny as hell songs. It was awesome. And Brian got to lose a round of chicken. And it's your whole next, it's your whole next album, Allie. Just put that out. 
Yeah. Okay. Brown still got to try to influence the draft, and then, but we couldn't properly be mad at him. So everybody wins. It was fair. Uh, hey, uh, real quick, Cargill. If you and I weren't playing chicken, what what would a good prize for grown ups to be? Uh, twelve or thirteen. So you think uh, so? So I did overpay, but you think by by only like two or three? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really was one of those. I, I honestly, I was will. I didn't think anyone would go for it, and I was willing to take it cheap because. It you know it was it money in the bank. It's gonna make a hundred, hundred and twenty easy, um, but uh, it won't do over that. It's definitely not going to to do any surprise numbers. No, like that like, movie has that movie has a ceiling. What and that you, ceiling I think is one twenty five. Yeah, what you always hope for in in the way we're playing the draft is you always hope to get um, uh, ten million dollars for every dollar spent. So like like it's just as a benchmark. And so in that regard, like I think I I think I overpaid Iron Man for what it will probably do but for the reliability so. index I mean, I mean it's it's you have to pay to secure those kind of movies like you have Some, to overpay that's just the price yeah Some, somebody in the chat room is asking uh, about here comes the boom and how that relates here and and you can't relate here comes the boom because two things one here comes the boom came out in the fall and two here comes the boom came out against the juggernaut that was sinister <laughs> <laughs> Well played, sir. Well played. I, I had Here Comes the Boom in the winter movie draft. Yeah. Argyle, of course, wrote the script for Sinister, just so everybody yeah. gets it. It was, it, was not, it was not good to have. I'll tell you what, man. Sinister was a great buy in, in the draft. I, 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 you know I love you, and you knew I knew that Sinister was going to be awesome, but I paid more for, uh, for Paranormal Activity, figuring that, you know, like uh, the previous year, Freaking just Justin, even though it was crappy, Justin had cleaned up on it, and I wasn't gonna get fooled twice. So I went for Paranormal Activity, and I shouldn't. I'm a terrible friend. Yeah. Instead, Padre S J cleaned up with uh, with Sinister. Richard uh, Richard uh, S Gibson and S D A from the chat realm made a kick ass spreadsheet. Did you guys see that? No. no. Where I got it? got it out of the chat room this morning, and then I copied it over. Uh, it automatically so you put in uh, your your es you put in your estimated gross so you have you have to go do your own research. Oh, but I then see. Auto it automatically calculates out of six hundred dollars uh, what percentage of the total each movie is worth based on your estimates and updates it as you go along to say what the max you should pay for any given movie at any point in the draft is. That's huge. That seems like something that I wish you'd shared. I, oh, yeah. well, I'm sharing it now. Attention to the chat room when they were uh, throwing that info out. Uh, I'll tell you what, real quick. I'm going to open up the, we got a straw poll, 14680. Strawpoll.me slash 14680. Who is going to win the 2013 summer movie draft? I'm going to put my money on Tom. Yeah, I like Tom. Too. And so I'm picking Tom. I'm voting. <laughs> what was the number at the end of that? Give me that again. Uh, one four six eight zero strawpoll dot me slash one four six eight zero, and they're all coming in right now. Uh, right now, I I, I think I think it's going to be Sarah. I think Sarah's got some of the. I, I think I, she's I got think a, so it's too. Exactly like the list she uh, she had uh, years ago. Yeah, nobody likes me at all in this chat room. Well, Thanks, but, but chat you, room. I, to be honest, Cargill, I think I think you've done a smart thing because uh, what's on our minds, where the hype is the strongest, are the movies that are closest to us right and now. And Scott's and Les. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they like you a little better now, Cargill. Wow, it's a Tom and Sarah race according to the chat room. That's amazing. <laughs> For some reason, everybody always loves Sarah's Hall. Sarah has bulk, too. In, in the uh, Not Sarah has bulk, but, but you know, the, in, <laughs> the number of movies she has. Well, dude, hey, hey, man, that's my strategy. You can't say it doesn't matter because it's worked out pretty well. It certainly yeah. has. No, the, no, the no, 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 draft. no, no. You have to hit. I mean, bulk doesn't matter. Yes. I mean, like, you, they are all lottery tickets, but you have to hit. So it's like, yeah, you are taking more swings, but it doesn't matter if you don't hit. If they're all. Well, yeah, but you also, I think this year more than ever, have a better chance of hitting because the field is so much more level. Uh, I mean, right. Pretty much, I it, it's all. I'll on, tell you what. Fa even though, I, on Fast and the Furious. I mean, we're all we're all laughing at, at how Tom, you know, has has you know, Tom and Sarah have sixty percent of the vote. But I mean, this is actually relatively even even for for previous years. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we all have pretty much twelve percent 
And then there's the two. Man. Says the guy. Says says the guy who doesn't have ten percent. I said. I said. I, I said twelve percent. We all have about twelve. We all have about twelve percent, except me, who's rocking ten. Well, whatever. Here, I'll give you a vote, and then we'll even up. <laughs> Last years has it been like there are upsets or is it basically like you can Oh yeah. Tell? No, that's just that's the amazing part is there's always upsets. I mean, I I can't even describe uh, I'll tell you what, Ali, please 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 go to nsfw sh- or draft.nsfwshow.com/chatrealm. Just make just make up your own team. Spend your own money. <laughs> like they're like basically what we auction these off at, those are the market rates. Just pick a bunch of movies, spend that money however you feel like and make your own roster cuz once you have a dog in the fight, man, so much fun. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah draft.nsfwshow.com slash form. Thank you, Tomsey. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm in. And what about, like, has it been once once you have the winners, is it like, oh, well, it's because this one movie is sort of like the turning point? Yeah, that, like, it's always some surprise. Enough. Always some movie does better or some other movie takes a dump. Like some, It's, it's like, us- usually the, the bombs. Like, that's yeah. what you're kind of, you're, you're playing. Because by and large, you can usually, I mean, like, it's not like Fast and Furious 6 and... Man of Steel are not going to make money. It's just whether or not they are going to make the transcendent kind of money I need them to make, or one of them is just like, oh yeah, by the way, it stinks. Yeah, like, it's like we knew, like two years ago, we knew I was out of the running when Green Lantern just tanked. There was yeah. no it, possible way, like none of his other movies were ever going to do well enough yeah. to compensate. Everybody, for that. everybody thought that it was going to do two hundred million. And I was gambling that it might do three hundred million, and then it made a hundred million. Right. And I right. that happened to me with the Hobbit in the winner movie draft. I I bet everything on the Hobbit. That's why I didn't care if I had here comes the boom because it was all my money was on the Hobbit, and then it underperformed. Yeah, and not and even built- not even massively underperformed. Like it just underperformed by like thirty percent, and that was enough and to I cost. Was not an overperforming. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, this is, you have never in your life thought that you would be frantic, except, of course, for Cargill, who had a movie open in wide release. But uh, I wanted to search out sites that had the earliest possible reporting on returns and projections for the weekend. You are oh, searching. God, when, when you make a movie, you don't do that. You can't do oh, that. Oh, you can't do They'll that? They'll email it to you, but it makes your stomach turn. It's, it's, um, I mean, the the week Sinister came out, it was very much like, oh, you know, we we think it'll do ten. You know, we were hoping for bigger, but if we hit twelve, it's a win. And then by Tuesday, it's like, well, if you hit, do we think it's going to do twelve? So if you hit fifteen, fifteen's a total win. And then by Thursday, it's like you're going to make fifteen this weekend. Congratulations. Um, it, the only way you could do any better is if somehow magically you make eighteen. If you make eighteen, then you guys have you know just you know nothing but net. And sure enough, we did eighteen point two. And see, you should have uh, rolled it back and said, "No, no, 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 no. There's no backsies. You said ten, and so <laughs> if we do eighteen, then everybody poops their pants." <laughs> well, and, and and essentially that's what ended up happening was everyone in Hollywood was like, "Oh, wow, this is a big surprise." Uh, and then one of the websites that reports numbers is like, "Well, I guess it's okay for this movie to the, the movie they, they, they had been undervaluing us all week, and when we blew away their projections, they're like, yeah, it did all right because as it turns out, that site has was doing favors for another company that had a movie opening the next weekend and was trying to downplay it so that they can go, this is what one of these movies is supposed to make. Was that just like one of the most magical moments of your entire life? Like you're gonna remember that forever that that the whole week leading up to it and Having that oh, the week leading up to it wasn't magical. The week leading up to it was ulcer inducing. Oh, sure, I know, but that's part of what made it so magical when you when you utterly destroyed, right? Yeah, when when uh, I, I will never forget the moment I was I, I was doing uh, uh, screenings at the Alamo Draft House, and I was doing Q and As after all the screenings, and I'm outside, and there's a whole group of people coming up to get photos with me and and to chat me up because they really enjoyed the film and the Q and A. And uh, I have to walk away from talking to a bunch of uh, fellow movie nerds because my phone rings and I get a call from one of the producers of the movie going, congratulations, you've got the number one movie in the country right now. Oh, my God. And like, that, crazy. That, and that's crazy. That's one of those. Like, <gasps> I'm the Friday number one. That's, oh, crap. Just, that is. And, and it was it was an amazing feeling. And there, then we ended up taking a very close third against a, a juggernaut hit, which was number one, Taken Two, and then uh, the movie that would end up winning Best Picture in the Oscars. So so amazing, dude. That like that's one of those like take a snapshot of your life, like remember this moment forever. 
and now I'm here on the NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it that nothing like, lasts. Fuck for your movie choice. <laughs> Can't stay on top forever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, I guess speaking of which, I guess we should wrap things up here. Thank you so much to Jammer B for staying extra late, for uh, figuring out a way for us to get, what, six, eight, seven people? Uh, this is the biggest cast we've ever had on an NSFW show ever. Thank you very much, uh, Jammer B, for your technical expertise. It was fun as always. Uh, are you going to – Jammer B, do you, make a, uh, do you make your own chat realm choice? Yeah, only in my uh, dreams. No, I think you should just go head on over to draft.show.com yeah. slash four and throw in. Uh, although you'll be up against, do you know who has been in the top like 10 every single year? Won it twice. P. Patrick Delahanty. Brand P. Delahanty, new Twitter, man. Uh, employee, Patrick Delahanty, is like a savant. Oh, yes. I forgot to give a huge, huge thank you to Lonely.Geek. Zach Holder is the one who made that epic motion graphic intro. We're going to have a special one that we use for our uh, weekly updates. Um, uh, we should hit up Vincent 404, ask if he wants to do the movie draft minute for uh, for this summer again. Of course. Of we course. really enjoyed that. And uh, I guess that's it for this episode. Thank you so much to everyone. Thanks, guys. One Thanks thing everybody. I'd like you guys to think about. Yes. Okay. Bye, Tom. Bye, Scott. Bye, everybody. Justin oh, and Brian, uh, uh, maybe a new updated tease for uh, the show? Yeah, we could do that right now. Yeah, since the tease isn't going to mention the movie draft, if okay. we update, if we try to remember what we did on Sunday and add movie draft to it, that'll, that'll be sure. good. Uh, uh, we'll kick it over to Justin to do that. But uh, uh, also, there was, oh, there was something I was going to tell you, doggone it. Oh, I recorded locally. I don't know what Tony can do with it, but I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll send it to him. Yeah, I don't so, know if that's going to be worth anything, right? Well, the audio, uh, I don't know how much ducking there was on your end with the audio. If there, okay. Because uh, at, least, at least we'll have dominant audio on this version. So yeah, I we, we, did, we did lose, we did lose uh, a lot of, some bids. There were definitely bids that went un, unheard. Okay, well then I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put that in there. Is Scott Johnson still there? No, Scott's gone. Nope, okay. they're all gone. Eric, we never loved you. All right, you. bye guys, I'm out. All right, so long, Cargill. See you, Cargill. Good seeing you. I'm going Thanks. to see you. Thanks, guys. Right, bye, bye, Allie. Allie. Thank you so much. Thank You're the you. best, Thank Allie. You. Here we go. And let me uh, let me actually square this up and keep it pouring it on you. <laughs> do you want, you want me to zoom in on you? No. <laughs> Hold on. I'm here to do the tease. Here we go. All right. Let me, let me get your audio. Cranked a little bit. Ski. Check, 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 check. Uh, okay. Let me let me press record on this and see if I can record it as well. All right, go for it, Justin. On this edition of the big, fun time, summer, double-sized annual of the NSFW show, we give you not one, but two hours of this very fine program. First, me and Brian do a little between the sheets, gab in action. I'm here live in Austin. And then in the second hour, we do the NSFW 2013 Summer Movie Draft featuring me, Brian, C. Robert Cargill, Scott Johnson, Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, and the internet songbird, Ali Spagnola, providing songs for each and every movie. It's all coming up on this edition of the NSFW show. <laughs> I was waiting for like starting now. Starting now. Enjoy the garden. <laughs> it's pretty good. Nicely done, sir. I don't even know if that makes any sense. Like, it, made it, do, sense it, do, it doesn't made matter to them. It does because I've done it in front of other people that they, don't they get laugh. the joke. They all yeah. laugh, right? Yeah. I just it's go like, enjoy the garden. So, something if something's funny, and then it's just funny, man. Like, like you can watch comedies that are in a language that you don't speak, and it'll yeah. be it's just funny. Yeah. Just funny. Yeah. Do you know Neil Gaiman's a second generation Scientologist? Really? Yeah. Huh? His dad, his dad was um like like the spokesperson for Scientology in uh in England. And uh and like in fact was like uh pulled up on uh, I'm gonna have to go back and read the thing on it but it's in inside scientology oh and in fact somebody posted recently like an interview with neil gaiman at age seven explaining how scientology works 
Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like they met a bunch of people and they're they're explaining all this stuff. By the way, I just got maybe the tweet that has made me the most happy. Uh oh, ever. <laughs> it's like screw Brian. He's terrible at this game. You're no, great. It was Danielle Nicole who writes. Sigh. Justin R. Young just has one of those faces I really like to punch. <laughs> <laughs> that did not go that did not go where I thought it was gonna go. I'm sorry. That was that was not me taking joy in your misery <laughs> at all. It was just a complete No, yeah, that utter... was it was my delight. I love the, Oh my god. I like the fact that there are people who cause you see that all the time where it's just like like at you know, I really think that at Lady Gaga is a whore, you know? <laughs> And it's yes. just like you know, mean things about people that you never think are going to see it, you know, so you at reply them. Sure, sure, sure. And it's like that that phenomenon fascinates me. And I think that this is probably, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt that it was a little bit more lighthearted than than actually wanting to punch me in the face. Right. But let's say it's real. That's awesome. Like, that's really exciting. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, well, I don't think he's ever going to see it. So, yeah. Face punch. For so, that so like you're all. you're you're big enough that you're a thing to someone. You're not a human being to them. Which is, it, it's interesting when you cross into that zone because you've been in that zone for a while long enough know? well i mean it, yes yes first you, you know you know and also i guess you know uh apparently i had a face that people wanted to punch because of my ridiculous hairstyle for the longest time as well yeah um but that, that was something we we're like uh you were you had the hair to get attention and that's just one of those things is that like you know you have to sift through attention isn't specialized it's not like right like great oh you're the best Right, you know, right. it's a, it's just it's there. People look at you, and then you have to figure out, you know, how to sift through the good and the look bad. Look at this. T two T two is saying that uh, he think he thinks he might be able to have it working in two weeks. Uh, the uh, summer mat, uh, the make your own movie draft. Uh, that's amazing because I'll tell you what, whoever wants to beta test that with me, I would love. I'll play again. Maybe to we'll do, do a, another a night league attack. that has that has the following rules. Here are the rules I want to do. All right. I want to have like 40 or 45 movies. Holy shit. Okay. Wow, I almost cursed on the air. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, have a, a five movie cap. So you, you can't can only, own more than five? You can only, you can only own five, what? right? All right. And then the rest of the movies are on the waiver wire. So you can, at any point, you can trade out one of your movies for what's for, left on the bench for the other stuff. No matter what you paid for one of your movies, you can take one of the trash. Now, wait, even after your movie took a dump and was terrible? No. Once it's out, once okay. it comes out, up it's until gone. release. Yeah, up until release. Wow. You can trade it out. Uh, and I would like to do, I don't know whether it's this league or another, another league, but I would like to do an international box office one. Yeah. Because that's another one where it's like all of a sudden, you look at some movies that are going to be crappy. Like internationally, they make money because they just have stars. Yeah. Like, do you they, get unlimited trades? That would be a question. Man, I'll tell you so what. Anyway, it, it wouldn't be a trade. It would be picking it up off the waiver wire. So you'd have to drop somebody off your bench to pick up another movie. Yeah. Uh, whoa! Look at this. Paul the Good Book guy says, "When we settle on a wine label, shoot him a PDF." He says, "If we can make them, I'll donate a thousand labels." Jesus. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We'll have to talk to our wine guy. Speaking of which, we got to sign that paperwork. Uh, yeah. What's a good? I'd like to sign it on my iPad. I don't like actually signing things. Why not? It's weird. What does that mean? Why? How would you? To be honest, I haven't signed an actual like piece of paper. I signed my employment contract with the Go Game, all my rent stuff in Sketch, the photo editing program for Mac. Well, I always I like. Just, I, just I actually write, I, just, I write my signature in like the paintbrush. I just have a, a a picture of my signature that I just whenever I have a contract, I just I just literally like if it's a word document, I'll do, it will obviously be the, just that picture in the word document embedded, and then I'll send them back the word document with a picture of my signature on it. See, that's pretty good. I guess there, I feel like there's an authenticity to me drawing my signature with the paint because it's slightly different. See, I like the lack of authenticity. So it's like if it's ever a dispute, I'd be like, "What is this? A picture of my signature? Anyone could have gotten that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, poop! 
Yeah. Man, that was a great draft. I almost wish really that good. would have been our only episode. <laughs> it is funny. I thought that I was very I funny. Find... And I, I like that no one's going to complain that we did two right. hours, you know? Yeah. Well, and Bonnie said that she thought it was pretty funny, the uh, previous one. Uh, no, we're not going to do a breakdown of Dancing with Myself. We, we got to call it. Uh, this is a fantastic. How one. many hours do you want from us? <laughs> yes. You vultures. How, how, uh, what time is your flight tomorrow? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, Enjoy the garden. Totally screwed up and is going to be enjoying Austin <laughs> until 7 p.m. instead of 7 a.m. Dude, this will be great. All right. Well, so long, guys. <laughs> We've got. A, a, uh, by the way, let me just say this. Um, there's only so much that we want to go over on like the show and everything, but GoFundMe.com slash Andrew's Bed. Andrew Epperson, uh, a great member of chat realm. He uh, is looking for. Put together some money so we can buy a hospital bed. I believe he's got C uh, is it CP. Yeah, I think it's spastic CP. Is that what he said? Yeah. Um, let's see. He says uh, spastic cerebral palsy, and so it's difficult for to get in and out of bed. But the, yeah, but this is the special bed he needs. Not covered by insurance. He's a super great guy. A bunch of chat realm uh, has already raised like eight hundred dollars towards the six thousand that it is. He's completely awesome. Uh, if, you, if you got money, you're like, I want to give it to someone who I know will actually benefit from it and need it, then hit up Andrew because he's pretty cool. Yeah, no, he's a solid dude. So go ahead, check it out. Throw some money. I've donated. I, we, we, both, donated. Yeah, we both donated. Yeah. Uh, Brian's donated. So so many people have. Just go ahead and uh, and, and check it out. And uh, we're going to talk about on weird things. But, uh, yeah, he's yeah. awesome. So go help him out. Awesome. All right, beautiful people. We love you. Bye, John. Thank you so much. See you guys. A lot You're of fun. Best, You're See better you, than everyone else put together, including us. Bye. Bye.